take this. But the thing about doing it like this is that before I compile, let's go to the, and this could be a little more advanced, but let's go to the reference viewer. Here, my component to the right, to the left side is all the classes that uses that component. For example, this component is being used in the first person character and in the first person example map. And to the right side is all the classes and the assets that the component needs for it in order to work. And we can also go to assets, size map, and we can see the same exact references, but we can see how much they, they, the, the size of them. For example, in my disk, my gun has eight megabytes for this texture and it can get a lot bigger. If we change it to memory size is the size it will take in my, in my RAM. So, I mean, it's fine right now because it's just th 34 megabytes, but whenever we reference an asset like this or like this, then you add more references. Here, we aren't using the first person character, so we can use this gun component for any type of character. And whenever we use it, we do not need to load this first person character into memory. If I compile and save and let's use Alt Shift R to see the references. Now we see that our references have added our widget that it could be fine because the widget should be really lightweight, but now we're adding a character class. So every time we use this component, this character class, even though maybe we delete it later, it will, will be still used. Which means also that if we go to the size map, now it, it isn't 32 megabytes, it just spiked up to 66. So every time we use this component, if the first person character is not loaded into memory, it will load. Just because even though we, we won't be using it, maybe we're, we have another character that has this com gun component, but uh, it start being a pain for your memory because we, we have a reference that uh, it's dragging us down, right? So th this is really a, an optimization like side sidebar, but managing your references will be uh, like something to keep in mind for the future. This we, we could also make another stream for uh, this theme because it's a little more complicated than what we just shown. So in order to avoid these references, we could also just get the owner, get its controller, get controller. That's a super pro tip, by the way. <laughs> the, the owner is an actor and any actor can't have a controller. So we need to cast it to a pawn or a character. Maybe a character would be better. Cast it to a character. The character will have a controller. We want it to be a player controller because the any AI won't have a hat. So get controller, cast to player controller. And even though I'm casting here, the character class is a base class done in C++ and it's always loaded. Player controller is the same. We are always using a player controller. So these are classes that are the foundations of the gameplay framework. So we, we really don't need to worry too much about casting it. And the player controller will have my hat. Get hat. And now we can get the same reference. Get 
uh, get hat ref. Ah, I need to cast the hat. Cast to um, first person hat. This also would be okay. Um, because probably the hat, um, that's why we're making it separate from the character because we want to change the hat or the character independently. So now here I can get the hat reference. And I do not like to work like this where I get a reference from a, from a class. What it, it is uh, a more clean way to do it because it, it will be easier to change later is in the hat ref. I, I, I'm sorry, in the first person hat, you just need to create the functionality that you need. For example, I need it. Where is my gun component? I need this functionality. Let's copy and paste in my hat. I'm going to create the functions that this function will update the max bullet. So let's call it the same update. Update max bullets. This is what it's usually called in programming a wrapper. Because we are just wrapping the functionality with a function. So let's correct this like this and the new value. I do not need to create these max bullets. We can put it like here, new value. That's okay. That's all right. And it's called a wrapper because inside my class, my hat class, we are doing the thing that we want to do. But from my component that doesn't have anything to do with that class, I'm not getting the reference. I'm just calling the wrapper update max bullet. And I'm going to pass it the same value here. And this is a cool way to do it because I really do not need to know how this behavior is being, well, this function is being implemented. I just need to know that it will do what I want to do. So if later this changes for whatever reason, I can change it here and I don't need to redo code in more than one class. So that's really cool.